Well, hi, and thanks for joining me in my shop again. And uh, what I'm working on now is the frozen shaft of the FM tuner, which is this part here. This big plastic wheel and, uh-oh, strings. There's strings here. There's strings here. Uh-oh. And that is the shaft right there. Let me get a little bit of a close-up of it. So the whole idea is to turn that shaft in behind, inside, where you can't see, is some kind of tuning apparatus. Could be uh, the same as the uh, what you see up here. It's a very bulk capacitor. Or it could, it could be a coil, but I don't think so. I don't think the way this is arranged. I think it's a small tuning capacitor located up behind this. So the shaft is stuck. So what I've done now is I've, I've loosened the screw so the uh, tuning will rotate uh, independent of the shaft. They're not stuck together. I don't dare take this wheel off. If I take this wheel off, I'll almost certainly drop the string. I may in the end have to do that though, take this wheel off and run the risk of having the string fall off and then I got another another restringing job uh, to do. So I don't want so I want to avoid pulling this off. That's so I'm gonna to try to get get a tool onto this, a little bit of shaft that's sticking out here. And uh, crank it. See if I can loosen this up. Sometimes you just work these things, they'll come loose. You throw in a touch of lubrication, you're done. Other times, these shafts are fused uh, into the uh, tuner and through a sleeve of metal uh, that is fused to them. Uh, so I'm really hoping that's not the case with this. Because uh, this is uh, one way in which radios die. Um, if you can't loosen up this, there's no way to tune this radio. At least the FM side of it still has AM and short wave. Okay, so I'm getting out my big honking tool here. Move the camera out of the way. I'm trying to. First, I want to assess if this is the right tool. It's on there. Now, first I start very lightly trying to move it. It's not the easiest thing to tell either whether you're having success because the tool can slip and move on it. Feels like it's starting to turn. Now it could be at one limit, so I, I can only turn it one way. It's loosening up. Fantastic! Yeah, it's loosening right up. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I think that's just a bit of lubrication that has become lubrication. There's some kind of gearing mechanism in there. So you get two or three turns on this shaft, generates one turn of the sleeve in behind there. That's fantastic. And you don't have to apply heat. You know, there's lots of options when you're doing this stuff. Heat is a major option. Uh, if these things are fused, heat sometimes will just loosen up. If it's a uh, lubrication that's taking place, it'll loosen it up. That's fantastic. If we had the radio running right now, we'd be zipping back and forth across the FM dial. <laughs> a bit like a rocket. Okay, it seems to have reached, it doesn't seem to be getting any looser now. Ooh. When you're using these big tools, like, like, whoops, like this, these big tools, they have a lot of power in them, huge amount of power, the squeezing power on this kind of tool is fantastic, it's huge. And it's easy to do some damage with these tools uh, because of the fantastic uh, energy that you can deliver on the end of it. So uh, you need to be careful with all this powerful stuff because you are dealing with fragile parts. 
than plastics. And if you can't feel the, you know, if your tool is so powerful, if you got so much leverage on it, you might not be able to feel uh, just what's going on. I'll give you an example. Here's a quick example of what I'm talking about. If I had attached this this way, and then hung way out here, I'd have this much leverage, okay? And maybe I'm not going to feel everything I need to feel to judge what's going on with the shaft when I try to turn it. But if you notice, I'm, for two reasons, I put it on this way, mainly because it was going to grip a lot better. That's really why I did that. But also then, I'm working the tool here. I'm not, you know, this is what's going through my head. I understand the leverage is much less. So I'm going to feel much more what it's like to turn this shaft. And I won't, I won't uh, do something unfortunate. I'm less likely to do something unfortunate. So, hey, I got excitement here. I'm excited. So, um, here's what I should do. I should do this. Give me back that tool. Gimme, give gimme, give never gets. Isn't that what the, you were all told? That's what I was told. I, when I was really young, I wasn't sure if they were saying Jimmy, Jimmy never gets. It was really quite upsetting. So I'm going to turn this all the way to one extreme. Okay, so that's one extreme. Right there. Then I will now turn this wheel all the way to one extreme, the same extreme. Okay, so the pointers... Where is the pointer? So the pointer is at one end of the dial now. And I will tighten up that screw. Not too tight. For testing purposes, I'll tighten it up a little. I'm just snugging it up. I'm watching this to see. Yeah, you know what? That crack is opening. That crack is opening. Oh, check this out. This is this is really something worth recognizing and seeing. So I'm gonna bring you up a little closer here. Let me sharpen up the focus. Okay, now there's a crack right at 12 o'clock on your, your view. And I'm gonna tighten the screw. I'm cognizant that every time I do this, I am probably propagating the crack. Since I get the screwdriver engaged here. Well, there we are. Okay, now watch that crack. There, the screw's just starting to engage. Can you tell it's opening and closing? You can see a tremendous effect of the whole plastic on this side. The lighting is changing as I uh, push it away from the shaft. Or is that actually what I'm doing? No, I'm pushing the other side away. Well, I don't know why it's doing what it's doing, but it's definitely doing something. So this is a serious problem. This will have to be very carefully repaired in some way. I have to think very hard about what to do about this. This is a very common problem with uh, radios. And, uh, I mean, this is a really bad problem with, with radios. So, but let's see if I'll turn the whole thing now. No, see, it's still gliding over the shaft. Let me just tighten it up a little bit on that shaft, including stretching it a little bit. Okay, it really wasn't connected at all before. No, see, it's still sliding. It could be what somebody did before is they tightened, they, the shaft got sticky, the thing started sliding, they got in here, they tightened the screw a lot. Hey, it's working now, but they set it up to crack. And sure enough, years later, even with it not being operated or touched or anything, just sitting there, this crack has grown. That's my theory, that's my story. Yeah, so epoxy might do the trick on this. A lot of epoxy, we're really loaded in here. But guess what, we'll have to remove this to do this. We'll have to remove it, take the string off, <laughs> and uh, fix it and put it all back together. Unless somebody's got some other ideas, and I don't know what those ideas are, even epoxying it. 
I don't know if you're going to get a temporary solution that's going to last a couple of years and the crack will just go through the epoxy. It's a serious problem. Drato. Let's, um, let's tune the radio, though. Just make absolutely sure that the tuner is working. Besides, it's always fun to turn these things on, so... Okay, now, speaker wires have kind of gone behind here. They look okay. Nothing shorted. Everything hunky-dory. It's set to FM. We're on. What happened? Nothing came on. Okay, turn it off. How come it didn't? How come it didn't come on? Oh, I haven't got the power supply for it. There's a good reason. So now we'll plug it in. There we go. By the way, these terminals here carry the B plus high voltage. Uh, these are almost deadly. Their position is terrible. They're in a spot where you can easily grab it. These can be charged. It can be charged right now, in fact. Grab it. Grab it all kinds of different ways. Hand on the chassis. Hand on the thing. This is a real shock hazard. In fact, it's so much of a shock hazard, now I've freaked myself out. I think I'm going to deal with that a little bit. The uh, bag I used over here on the power supply that's covering those terminals, this is essentially the same thing right here. And this, is, this is just run-of-the-mill masking tape. This is hardly a permanent solution. It's not meant to be. It's just a lot more than nothing if I do that. I managed to take the wheel down here. Okay, so I feel a little better now. It's also a bit of a flag, you know, kind of sticking out and telling me, hey, watch out. Switch on. What's the problem here? Okay, so when I turn power on to something and it doesn't come on, I get really nervous really fast. I, something's going on, I don't know what it is, it's not what I expect. I don't like it. Why is this not coming on now? Hmm. getting pretty quiet, aren't I? Come on! You should be operating now. Oh, he smokes. Come on. This, come on, this is stupid. Say what you jump one hurdle and it puts another one right in front of you. Let's look and see if I blew the main fuse. I don't know if I can get 
to see about this. No, I'm pretty sure it's still in there. Maybe, maybe it's not making contact. Oh my god. <laughs> it seems to be... Hey, you've been sent back to square one, Jimmy. Okay, so let's get out the voltmeter here. It's like a game of snakes and ladders, isn't it? You sort of climb your way up and then whew, all the way to the bottom on some... Uh, on a snake. Yes, a snake. Okay, so I'm going to test for line voltage right on this wire here, which is literally the outlet. Okay, there's nothing there. This meter, a little hard for you to see right now, is showing 120 volts right on the plug. The measurement is made right on my outlet here. Where, <laughs> where the voltage go? Okay, so I'm going to guess that uh, the uh, cheater cord is not cheating so well. So let's see. Yeah, I, I may have had this one clipped onto the insulation here. Let's, let's try that. that. That one may have been clipped on the insulation, not on the wire. There we go again. That got it. That got it. That got it. You know, I didn't do a quick safety check before I turned on the power either, so I should have. But we seem to be okay. So we're going to try to tune the FM here. Probably do this with an e with a smaller tool, but it's not turning. There it goes. Takes me back. Only we don't want to listen to music here. No, no, no music. But anyway. in North Dakota and crying. Crying. Over traffic? Yes, because it wasn't like that. It wasn't home yet. And it took me about a year to feel comfortable being there. And then it's... Fantastic. And I can see the magic eye is working also, which you can't quite see. Hey, let me show you the magic eye. There it is there. It's a little over bright in my camera, isn't it? But if I take off that antenna, you see it change? It's not very good on this camera. Too much, too much. Got the, but anyway, nevertheless, it's working. That's a great deal. This one, this magic eye has a little spot at the bottom. See the little spot down there? That's where. That's the stereo indicator light. But I don't believe this guy is going to make stereo. 
Okay, so we got the radio working. We have a problem to deal with here. Once we have this problem solved, then we're going to be on to just the tuning up of the radio. The alignment, which I'm guessing is in good shape anyway, so I may not even require that. Of course, I'll have to reinstall the AM antenna. And uh, it's all going forward from here, I think. Just got to decide what to do about this thing here. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you're enjoying these.